And we're back on the air on Cult Radio Agogo with the one and only, one of the best character actors I have ever seen on film. And the nicest man in Hollywood. The nicest man in Hollywood, Erwin Keyes. Welcome to the show, Erwin. Oh, welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> you know, we go way back, Erwin, because we were on Horror Kung Fu Theater together. <laughs> we did? Yeah, we did the Horror Kung Fu Theater when you came out and you were on the uh, Night Shadow show with... Oh, oh right, right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't, well, that wasn't long ago. No, it wasn't okay. too long ago. <laughs> And then, of course, I did one of the best articles I ever did for Videoscope on you. That that turned out really good, too. Oh, right, 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 right. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things I want to talk about is we've got some really good friends over there at Anchor Bay DVD, and uh, they're releasing a film that you're in, a brand-new film that involves wrestling called WrestleManiac. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And you got to tell me all about that, Erwin. Oh, oh, the fans are going to love this film. Why is that? I, I've seen this film a number of times, and I, you know, I wouldn't say it if I didn't know it was a good movie. And uh, basically, it, it 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 deals with, uh, well, um, these kids are uh, driving in this um, um, van in the middle of Mexico. They're making this amateur porno movie, right? And uh, they get lost, and and they have no idea where they are. Uh, everything's going wrong, and they cross paths with me, and I'm like a I'm like a coke headed. What is that? Oh, hang on a second. Okay, I, I think Tiffany hit a button there. Sorry about that. All right, go on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see anything wrong. Wow. No, what, no, we weren't bleeping her. <laughs> oh, I see. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. We're okay. These kids are in Mexico shooting this amateur porno movie. And uh, and they're lost, and they come across paths with me, and uh, I'm the stranger, and uh, I'm like coke-headed American out of nowhere, living in the middle of nowhere, and uh, they they come up to me and uh, kind of ask me where they are, and trying to find directions and some help and some gas and this and that, and I'm the guy who tells them. Do not go down that road. And you know, those are the best roles. They, these, I mean, this is a long scene, and it goes on and on. I, I warn them. I tell, I, I tell them, please, I, not please, I tell them, do not go down that road. The only thing down that road is El Mascarado. El Mascarado is a Mexican wrestler who is insane uh, to the nth degree that he ends up killing everybody in the insane asylum and he's there with just himself and he he, he takes off their faces and he wears all the faces Ooh. of everyone he's killed and these kids they th think it's oh man let's go make our porno movie there you know and i i warn them i told them do not go and let me guess they don't listen they do not listen. <laughs> they never listen the kids do not listen to me I, I gave him the best advice. I mean, it was such a... Uh, but but from there, the, see, the movie only gets bills. I'm telling you. This movie just gets... It, it's it's fun. It's horror. And it's action. And, and it never stops. People, they jump out of their seats. It's it's such a fun movie. Well, I think it is, it's cool because I always thought wrestling and horror mixed well. And, and to bring that kind of back... I used to watch the old Santo films. I don't know if you ever saw any of those or not. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but like, what was this shot at? This was uh, um, this was shot like way out in the in the uh, uh, in in the uh, uh, Santa Clarita Valley, but in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was they actually had a, a Mexican village set there that was used for for everything, and and that's where they shot this thing. But it's just you know it's just fun and chills. And and it's had incredible reviews. It, uh, it's played uh, uh, on DVD in Europe now, in France, uh, and in in Japan, England, everywhere. They love this movie. Fantastic. And, and just uh, wait till the Americans get to eat this thing up, um, and wait till the wrestling fans see this. Oh yeah. They're going to love it, you know. And of course, it's coming what, out. What El Mascarado does. It's coming out on DVD in the U.S. as of March 11th. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and Anchor Bay, they love this. Yeah. Anchor Bay is cool people too. I mean, they they have all all the best really good cult films and everything. And it's got to be a pleasure for you to be on their label. Uh, you know, I I knew it. I I uh, 
you know, uh, the producer of the movie, you know, how, you know, they always get kind of, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I told them after the first time I saw this movie, I said, you got a hit on your hands. Yeah. Don't worry. They're going to find this movie. You know, movies, they get found by people. Mm-hmm. And that's what this one is. It's a really good movie. Well, you definitely have an eye for what could be a cult hit, because you've certainly been in a lot of crazy type films that, through word of mouth, has really, you know, become big films, and even films that weren't necessarily horror films, that were small, low-budget films that became really big, like Risk Cutters. Oh, oh, well, Risk Cutters, well, (laughs) yeah, we, uh, you know, it was, had great reviews, you know, everybody loved that movie, too, who's seen it, you know, it's, it's so hard today to put out an independent movie. That's that's the uh, problem. You can't get them to to stay in the theaters very long. They're just, you know, all they want to show is the same Hollywood, you know, big budget junk. You know, yeah. Uh, it's it's very difficult. I was really surprised to see all the uh, the TV hype and, and all the promotion it got because I think it was probably about as big as that other little independent film, Sideways. You know. Hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. So you, do you There's another one I have coming out. Maybe you don't even know. Go ahead. What's that? Uh, I have a, a movie coming out called The Urn. It's opening. It's opening for a week in Hollywood at the Bever, at the Beverly Fairfax Cinema. The, the week of it starts on Labor Day, February 29th. That's when we're having the premiere there. Uh, basically, it's this zany horrorish comedy. Um, and my character is a is a guy, is a cat who uh, he he's, he digs up bodies and cuts them up for for parts for medical schools. <laughs> I, I, and uh, it's 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 just this crazy comedy. I think people are really going to uh, you know love it. You know, with the horror thing involved. It's it's it, it, well we'll see. You know, it, it, it's just coming out now. Well, I don't know if you saw the news, but I was wondering. This happened a while ago. Maybe they got some of those body parts from UCLA. As I understand, their medical school was selling some of the parts under the table. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something something that is interesting to me, Irwin, is that you know I've I've met you in person three or four times, and you are so nice. You're such a sweet guy. But in all of these films, you play a lot of villains and you play a lot of bad guys. Do you enjoy playing the villain? Uh, well, somebody's gonna do it. <laughs> it's someone. They need somebody to do this thing, and and you know they they try to get the the, the casting people. They 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 bring in their brothers and their cousins, and they bring in this and that. They bring in everybody they can, but me. And then finally they. They they give up and say ah we gotta we gotta have Irwin Keys in this thing, and 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 then that's how I get to work you know they just know me you know they just find me. So you, you're not really interested in doing the the romantic role. Uh, <laughs> I've had a few actually romantic roles. I played the I, I've always got the bad girls. Years right. ago, uh, uh, you know I, I yeah I've done movies years ago where I always got the bad girls you know that. that uh, which was always fun. You know. Yeah, because yeah, the bad girls are fun. fun. Than pretty girls, you know. Well, you know, they're, they're not all snotty and conceited like the pretty girls. So. Right, right, yeah. You know, your typical pretty, you know, movie type of girls. You know, it's more fun the bad girls. They're, they're more interesting. So do you still say that probably your most recognizable roles in House of a Thousand Corpses? Uh, I would say definitely uh, uh, among horror fans, it's uh, it definitely is. They... Uh, they just, you know, love that movie. Everywhere I go, I, I, you know, every day somebody will come up to me and, you know, they'll give me the thumbs up and, you know, they'll so ask me always, how's Rob Zombie, you know? And, uh, you know, I say, oh, he's doing great, you know. I mean, I, you know, I haven't seen him in a couple of months, but he's okay. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they assume that you live with Rob or something, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's in my closet. <laughs> he's in my closet here. Uh, but he's okay, <laughs> <laughs> now, when when we talked at the restaurant, remember when the waitress was so rude? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we talked about Devil's Rejects, and I asked you uh, what the fans were like from Devil's Rejects, and your comment to me was, Devil's Rejects has fans? You you kind of didn't like that movie so much, right? Uh, i, I got to tell you, I've, I've, I saw it once, and then I saw it a second time, and I really liked it a lot the second time. I, I'm one of those people, I think I miss a lot in a movie the first time I see it. I really need to see it again and again until I really start to get a movie. And, and that Devil's Reject really has, 
it really has a lot of levels there that, that uh, I, I, you know, i got to take back my statement because I really do like it. Yeah. Well, you know, I felt the same way with some I had to see again, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, movies, there's so much intricacy in, in, in each scene and the clothes and this and that and looking for the microphones coming down and this, you know, and all the mistakes and, and the script and the acting and, and the direction. And by the time you're looking for all this stuff, you sometimes miss what's, yeah. what's right there on the screen. Right. Well, thank you so much for at least admitting you, you said it and said you take it back uh, outside of what I've had other actors tell me. I didn't say that. I have it on tape. They said it, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, some people can't admit their faults, you know. Yeah. You oh. know, uh, I, I think it's just mine is just, you know, I need sometimes to see a movie more than once to really get it. But that, that, that Devil's Rejects really got to me. I've seen it now about three times, and I really like it. And it's amazing to me that not a lot of people realize that you were in Friday the 13th. Well, yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, that was back when I was living in New York. I was just starting out in the movie business. You were just and, a baby uh, then. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I actually did another, uh, another movie for uh, Sean Cunningham. Um, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, um, oh, Manny's Orphans. It was a, a soccer movie. Uh, of course, I played the bad guy, and the coach of the soccer team uh, was involved in sports betting, and he got in over his head, and I'm the guy to break his arms. And that's that was my first thing with 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 Sean Cunningham, and then uh, uh, then he called me up. He goes, "Oh, I got a little part for you. You want to do it? It's just a, it's just a couple hours." So I said, "Sure." And, and we do this movie, and I don't hear anything for three years, and then finally it came out, and and there I was in in the uh, diner scene, and uh, you know uh, you know in in the movie Friday the Thirteenth. A lot of people don't realize that I guess you're like uncredited in the film, which is is too bad, but you know. Thanks to me, we're letting everybody know that they need to like see that again and, and see your part. I'm I'm uncredited. Oh, are you? Uh, says you're uncredited. The guy who's written the book, uh, the book about Friday the Thirteenth, felt guilty that he didn't put my name in there. Ah. But they, he didn't realize that no one realized that that was me in the diner, and I was actually the MacGuffin. I was the first uh, weird character in the movie, and people were looking at me, thinking, "Is he going to be Jason?" <laughs> right. I actually were wondering if I was going to turn into the Jason because no one knew what Jason was. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, you know, the, the, that was the MacGuffin that you know how Alfred Hitchcock used to throw into movies. You know, little things that made you look and what is that? You know. Everybody, everybody's thinking you were Jason because you're you're really big, and instead Jason was a little naked boy in the lake, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's how it turned out later on, and. Um, and and I've been uh, I chose and I've been with Betsy Palmer and she always tells people that there is no other Jason, only the one in the lake. <laughs> she doesn't believe in any other of those movies. We're hoping to get her on. Uh, we had the lady that chopped her head off in the first movie on uh, last week. <laughs> That's and, lovely. And, and her, her, her story was when they did the fight that Betsy said, "You have to really." hit me and I mean they really did because she told her that in old Broadway they really beat the hell out of each other you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean yeah, yeah. no stuntmen man yeah yeah she was uh, she's a real pro and she's still out there uh, doing the circuit you know she's still working occasionally and uh, doing the horror shows but I understand that you know there, there's certainly another role that you're you're very recognizable for and that's uh, for intolerable cruelty oh yeah we easy uh, Joe own brothers uh, yeah you know they're uh, you know uh, I, I hate to use that word genius, but they're they're really something special. You know they know how to make a good movie. So was it their idea that you would be all asthmatic and everything? And well, um, uh, from f first of all, the the for me to get that part was hell. Really? We got a moment to tell the story. Sure, you you didn't have to like go to bed with anybody or anything, did you? Everyone? Oh no, no. Oh, okay, well, that's it good. It wasn't that simple. <laughs> It was it was like the hottest day of the year, and uh, um, I, I really, really thought I had the part down. And I go into the casting director's office, and I'm sitting there, and it's there's no air conditioning. We're waiting an hour, and finally my turn comes in there, and I have to do this thing with her, and I'm wheeze, I have to wheeze and say the lines, and each time she stops me after I did a line and said, "No, you have to do it this way," and then I would do it her way, and then she go, "Go back." And, then, and do it over, and it just went on and wow. on. I mean, it reached the point where 
you know, I walk out of there and I'm like punching myself, saying I'm not going to get this part. I'm punching myself because I did something wrong. And then the next week they call me up to to come meet the Cone Brothers, and I go in there and and my intention was to make them laugh, you know, and do it exactly what the casting director wanted. And right before I go in, there was some little little guy in a gangster suit who. He comes out and says, oh, I just got the part or something like that. You know, actors do that. And they lie to they, each they, other, right? Yeah, they think they could throw people like me off. Wow. You know, but I've been around long enough. So uh, when I went in there, and I'm doing it her way, and uh, and the Cone brothers, they start off on the, uh, on the couch, and they end up on the floor. They're laughing so hard. And they look at me, and they say, can you do it again? So, okay, so we did it a second time, and, you know, there they are on the floor again. And, uh, well, okay, it's done, you know. They know who I am. And they call me back the next, the next week again, and everybody who was in there said, oh, I got a week, I got two weeks in this movie, I got three days, and, and me, I had nothing. And I go in to read for the Cone Brothers, and they're sitting on the couch. I read again, and they're on the floor. Wow. And they go, can you do it a fourth time for us? <laughs> I did it a fourth time, and they're on the floor. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then I leave, and then I had my manager call like two days later, and, they, and he's talking to the casting director, and the casting director says, well, we're not sure if we're going to go to New York or not. And then he goes, well, you want early keys. He's, you just said he's your first choice. And then she slammed the phone down on my manager. Ooh. And, uh, and then uh, uh, an hour later, they called me up and hired me. There you go. There you go. I think it, it really offset the character well because here's this big, strong guy, and he had this weakness because he couldn't breathe. He had to have an inhaler, you know? Well, you know, uh, 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 the thing is, I think it was all the timing. If you watch the, the movie, we, 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 we created timing within the scene, when to wheeze. You know, it, you know these, these Cone brothers knew, knew, it, knew it, right, what they wanted. You know, we, in fact, we did my death scene so, so quickly that uh, uh, they never expected George and me to finish the death scene in like 40 minutes. They had allotted like four hours, and we were done in 40 minutes. And they're looking at each other and scratching their heads because they're not used to extra time. You know, on you know, they they, they always think they got it down just right. You know? Right. And here we left we left them with with almost three and a half hours of extra time. You know, it was it was very funny. I think you probably learned a lot of that timing and doing sitcoms like the Jeffersons, right? Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, years ago when I did the uh, Jeffersons, uh, I'll never forget the first time I walked out on the stage. This was my first job in California, my first sitcom ever. I walk out, and that audience is laughing at me. I'm in my gangster suit. One, They take one look at me, and they're laughing, right? And they were laughing so loud. So at that, at that time, do you have an urge to, to be appreciative, or do you, you get mad because they're laughing at you? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, this was, you know, it's, it's the job, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're laughing at my character, you know, because he was so perfect, you know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm like his bodyguard character, and they're laughing at me, and I couldn't say my lines until, until the audience, uh, the, their volume came down so I could say the line. And the minute I said the line, the, the, uh, the noise came right back up and with laughter. You know, it was up and down and up and down because they just loved me so much. And, and that's doing six of those shows. That's a rush that you get that you don't get on a movie set, too, because you don't get that audience feedback, you know? Yeah, the, uh, live, it's, it's almost live theater. You could say it's almost live theater. Wow. It really is. It's just, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. But you got to remember, this stuff is really, was really well written. It's, it's, this, this comedy, there was no laugh track with, with the Jeffersons. Yeah. That was the real thing. And they were they were a good bunch of people too. Oh yeah, they they were uh, they were all the best. They really were nice people, and it was you know it was a lot of fun working with them. Now you told me a story when we did the article about when you worked in House with Thousand Corpses, and of course everybody knew you as the guy that pushed a murder ride and everything. Which by the way, the set is located just down the street. I can walk there. It's seriously within like one or two blocks of my house. And I told you that you said 
I didn't think anybody lived out there, but we do. <laughs> you mean you live what is it, Avenue Q or something? And yeah, Jeff? right down the street from it. We live off of uh, Avenue O. Know, I mean, yeah, that's really way out there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's anything out there, but maybe an occasional Joshua Tree. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Cult Radio Go Go. I mean, it's a perfect location because none of my stalkers can find me out here. Yeah, yeah. But the situation is, is I guess that it was your suggestion to Rob about doing a, a really spooky laugh oh oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah yeah well you know uh we're we're doing this and uh um i said to rob i said you know uh you know i said i'm talking to rob and i'm like kind of whispering to him because you know everybody the minute you talk to rob everybody's saying what's he, what's he saying what's he saying everybody want to know what rob is saying so uh, i'm talking to him and uh i told him i have this horror laugh and he looked at me, and I don't think he ever heard that expression, a horror laugh. He goes, a horror laugh? What's a horror laugh? And I said, this is what it is. <laughs> and he said, let's use it. And you really see that in the scene, with, in the robbery in the robbery scene. That's where we really came out with the horror laugh. Yeah. And I was, you know... And, and I just had so much fun there working with Sid. Sid Haig. And the, I should have his name on the tip of my tongue. The other guy that, that was in a scene with you that was from Bonnie and Clyde. I don't know if you know who I'm referring to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, no. Rob told me that he had a lot of problems with him because he had trouble remembering his lines in that. Rob told you? Yeah. Rob told me a lot of shit about a lot of people from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he, he was, yeah, he was, yeah, he was in that scene. Uh, well, I, I, you know. The name was Pollard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Michael J. Pollard. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, he's kind of a he was a, he was kind of an oddball actor, but you know, a very good actor. I'm surprised. I didn't know he had a a line thing. Yeah. In fact, Robbie, even, he said nothing but good stuff about you, by the way. <laughs> but he told me that that even Sid Haig, he said that he would do Captain Spaulding, and then they they'd go for break, go on hiatus for a little bit, and they'd come back. And he said when Sid came back. He forgot how to do Captain Spaulding. It wasn't the same as the original takes. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's uh, uh, it's it's a tough. You know, it's hard for actors. You know, to, you know, you do it, and sometimes they want take after take and different angles and change the lenses, move the cameras back, and you know, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fatigue on someone. You know, to, to do it exactly the same. Now, I've got to ask you, being in a Rob Zombie film, of course, Rob has all these little teeny bopper girls that, that just love him. Does that kind of, like, rub off on you? Oh, uh, the goth girls? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do, do, do you get a lot of invitations? I mean, do they give you, like, the room key? And... Yeah, yeah, you know, I've, I've had my share of goth girls. You know, they, uh, there's something special about them. You know, uh, there's, you know... They, 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 you know. Besides looking good, they actually have something to say, and uh, you know, they actually stand for something. And uh, I actually uh, enjoy goth girls. You know, goth. I, I always say goth girls are easy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you know, it's, it's got to be like an upper crust to be goth because it's very expensive to be goth. I mean, those clothes cost a lot of money. Uh, it, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, that leather, that leather and chains and stuff, it's not cheap, you know. But uh, yeah, they're very nice. I always, uh, I, uh, you know, the goth girls are always very nice to me. So uh, they're always smiling and uh, you know, shaking and shaking and you know, doing their thing. And you actually got to play the Frankenstein monster. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, uh, uh, we did this movie many years ago, Frankenstein General Hospital. It was a horror film, actually, you know. So, uh, but it's a horror comedy, uh, and uh, you know, I, you know, uh, 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 they hired me to play Frankenstein, and uh, basically, Frankenstein's monster. You know, I, I uh, get a, you know the electricity and all that. In the, the it, it's odd in the movie they had the laboratory, which was underneath the hospital, was in black and white. And once we enter the hospital, the movie comes into color. I have a Wizard of Oz thing. Yeah, yeah. They really, uh, I really like that. You know, so, they, they, you know, that little touch of the old uh, uh, Frankenstein movie, you know, the original Frankenstein. Well, was that before or was that after Young Frankenstein, I wonder? 
that was after. So let me ask you this then. Did you watch Young Frankenstein? Years, yeah, this was a few years after. Okay, so like, did Peter Boyle influence you at all when he played the Frankenstein monster in Young Frankenstein? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, uh, uh, not really. Not really? Uh, no, it was a different kind of Frankenstein. This, this character, uh, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was more modern. You know, I had to ride a skateboard in the movie. Oh, did you do that yourself? You know, and, and, then, and then I uh, fall in love with... Uh, uh, a Playboy bunny who's the psychiatrist at the hospital who's into uh, S and M, you know, and uh, they, you know we go into all kinds of uh, craziness. It was it was a cute movie that uh, you know, like a, an independent film, which you know it you know it's hard to get out there these independent movies. And you know the thing is too, and maybe it's because you do a lot of independent films, is you're what I call an actor's actor. And you really love what you do, and you are so dedicated to, to everything that you do. And, and what do you attribute that to? I mean, you, you just are, are totally into it, and you're totally unspoiled, and, and you really appreciate the people that are around you and the crew and everybody and the fans. And why is it that you enjoy it so much? Well, it's my life. You know, it's uh, years ago I chose, you know, you know I, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, equate acting with making a lot of money. They equated acting with, you know, uh, a chance for me to express who I am. Yeah. Uh, create, be, be creative. Uh, that's what, that's what it meant to me. And, uh, you know, that's, that, you know, that's how I look at it. Uh, uh, you know, today it's, I don't know, the stuff is, everything is dollars and cents. And sometimes I think they lose uh, so much of the creativity because of it. Absolutely. And a thing that I bet people get surprised at, because I, I interviewed recently Michael Berryman, who was from the original Hills Have Eyes, and he plays a lot of crazy characters too. And I think a lot of people get surprised when, when they meet people like him or like you to find out that you guys are so smart and articulate because of the crazy roles that you play. They probably think that you're like talking in three-letter words, and then you're talking very articulately. Do they get surprised? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, uh, uh you know, they look at you like you're these characters, you know, these crazy characters that you play. They don't see you that, you know, perhaps you're something other than that. You know, that you're just performing. You're an actor in a performance. Uh, but, of course, you know, I mean, I don't know about Michael, but I have a college degree and, uh, you know, I've, uh, you know, and I, uh, other things, too. I paint and I do all kinds of things. And, you know, I read books and, you know, actually read books and, you know, I enjoy movies and all kinds of things, you know. I'm not just one crazy monster, you know. Yeah, you were telling me when we did our interview, there was a newspaper photo or something published of you where you were, like, choking somebody. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, there's that other side, too, but that's the actor <laughs> side of you. Oh, the real you is... Oh, I do that. That's... Uh, that's my bit I do at, at horror shows. Yeah, you said, like, everybody wants you to choke them in photos, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, they come up for an autograph and, uh, you know, and I'm really, you know, I'm talking to them and this and that and uh, I sign the autograph and they go, oh, can we take a picture? And I say, sure. And uh, just as I'm about to take a picture, I said, let me choke you. And they go, oh, what? Oh, sure. And as I choke them, they actually get into it. Now, see, I, I have a suggestion because I know you get huge lines of people that's waiting to meet you. I have a suggestion to how you can make those lines go faster. If you write your name on your hand and when you choke them, you'll leave the autograph on their neck and then you'll, you'll kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's great, but I, you know, I'm one of those, I kind of like talking. To people. <laughs> I kind of, you know, I like I like talking to people. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's fun. You know, it's fun to hear what they have to say and you know, uh, I ask people where they're from and what do they do, and you know, I just, you know, I just enjoy meeting people. You ever find out that like people are really shy to come up to you and they really don't know what to say? Uh, yeah, I meet people like that, you know, and then at shows sometimes there's there's always one one person there. You don't know it until after that you talk to them a little bit and they just hang around and just you talk and. They start talking and talking and talking, and then every time they pass you the rest of the weekend, that entitles them to come over and just start a conversation. Yeah. You know? And uh, you're you're in the middle of other things, and 
Uh, you know, it's just there's always one of these, you know, kind of I call them kind of crazies at a show. The one, the right. ones that like you're standing next to at a urinal and they want your autograph. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're Owen <a> Key. <laughs> oh, a thousand corpses. Well, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> you know, in a couple of minutes I'll, I'll I'll be more available. <laughs> uh, this movie Nightmare Carnival is that coming out? Or did that even happen? Because it oh, says post uh, one of those. It's uh, uh, you know they're in the raising money stage. Ah. Uh. You know uh, the the one of those make. Then there's another horror horror film there. Um, a neighborhood watch. Uh, it's uh that's coming out now on DVD. It's got another title. Uh, it's just coming out. I think this week. Uh, uh, basically, it's um, I have a little scene in there. I'm the garbage man in that. But uh, you know, uh, th- this guy, uh, uh, you know, he, when new neighbors move in the neighborhood, he uh, poisons them, <laughs> and, and he keeps po- poisoning every, every everybody to the point where he uh, starts being his own doctor and starts operating on, the, you know, on their uh, kidneys and uh, <laughs> taking them out. It's a really weird movie. <laughs> Really, I, I took my girlfriend to see it the first time, and, and the, she got so sick looking at this movie. And it always happens when people saw this movie, they got sick. You know, really? Because it was so bloody and so realistic. You know, it's just an odd movie. Well, I'll tell you, we have some neighbors that live out here next to the drive-in, and, well, maybe I better not ask that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, this was like shot out, you know, somewhere like your kind of neighborhood, way out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here in the middle of nowhere. And you even did Tales from the Crypt. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, directed by John Frankenheimer. Uh, uh, You know, he directed that episode. uh, Uh, He did Basket Case, too, I believe. No, wait, that's Henlotter. It was, was you know, I played an interesting little uh, character in the half-hour show. He was... He uh, he actually wanted to return a book to the library, and this character was kind of didn't speak right. You know, he that's, he would only return it after everybody left the library, and and there was this killer on the loose, and uh, you know I was of course the uh, first suspect to be the killer because I look like I'm look like I'm a crazy killer, but I was just returning my book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of those kind of roles. I, I don't know. Maybe that's that's why you is that why you try to be so nice because you try to because you, maybe you got to try harder. <laughs> people are like intimidated to come up to you or something. You know, you get that or. Uh, I guess I've had that, but uh, you know, I'm actually kind of shy in my own way too. You know, everybody's shy. I'm a shy person too. You know, I I kind of keep a low profile, and if somebody has some has something to say to me, I'll I'm there to listen. You know, but. Uh, Everybody's got their uh, yin and yang and yang and yin. Oh, well, they forget you were in the Flintstones, so you was in some, some nice kids' films, too, so, you know. Oh, those were, you know, I, th- I got to say, that was that was uh, my great year, 1993. I had a blast. I worked the whole year and uh, between the Flintstones, and then I did uh, uh, the Oblivion movie, two Oblivion movies in Romania, and... Uh, uh, but the Flintstones was it was so much fun working with my old buddy John Goodman. You know I knew him back when we both started back in New York, and uh, you know uh, it, it was just he was the best. He he's he was uh, Fred Flintstone. You know if, if I was to pick anybody, he was the guy. And I bet you he's exactly like he was in Roseanne, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he was, I mean, Fred Flintstone was just fun. It was, that was so, we had so much fun. There were scenes that I did that didn't get into the movie. I had a couple of other scenes. Um, there was a scene where I'm, where I'm driving the dinosaur, which actually was, uh, 18, uh, uh puppeteers, uh-huh. you know, and, and, and they, they create the dinosaur, and then later on they would, cut, you know, uh, do it in special effects. But it didn't, you know, they had so much of, so many things shot in the movie that they had to, uh, you know, they couldn't have everything in there. Was there ever a time that you did some of these movies like that? Well, I, I would imagine you probably did, and you're such a great actor, but was there ever a time that you ever did these movies to where the scene was so silly it, it was really hard for you to do it or hard to believe it? You just wanted to laugh? No, nothing like that. I, 
I've had been disappointed that some scenes I've done didn't make it into the movie. I did this movie, The Asylum, with Malcolm McDowell. Uh, if you remember Malcolm McDowell, oh, uh, yeah. he, he's one colorful character. Let me tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was actually my uh, my my hero as an actor as an actor when I was in college. Uh, he did this movie, Oh Lucky Man, mm-hmm. and, and if I saw that movie once, I must have seen it about fifty times. I just loved that movie so much. And then then years later, I'm in this movie and I'm I'm digging a ditch to bury this body for him. And here I am in this scene, and you know, putting the body in there. But I had this scene in there I, in a, in the rubber room. My character was a guy, Pat Tool, who was you know, in a, you know, mental case in this hospital. And uh, I had this scene where I'm crying in the in the hospital in the in the rubber room. And I always felt bad it didn't get in the movie because the and the editor even sent me a copy of it because he said this was such a great scene. You know, unfortunately, they didn't use it in the movie, and I actually still have a copy of that. Wow. Yeah, it's too bad stuff I got happens. I, I know that, like, we were having a conversation because you were on a set of Horror Kung Fu with me and, and Kenneth J. Hall, and you two got into a conversation about how a lot of times you don't exactly get paid sometimes you're supposed to too, right? Don't get paid? Well, I heard stories about, uh, you know, actors that don't always get their checks. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, um... Um, don't get paid. I've always been pretty lucky. Um, That's because you're huge and you can kick their ass. <laughs> when I did the Oblivion movies in Romania, it was for this guy, Charlie Ban. Mm-hmm. That's the magic word I was going to bring up. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Ban. And, uh, you know, he had nothing to do with the, money, with the movie, but he had something to do with the money, right? Right. And um, I always, whenever I see him, I always kid him about this because I, 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 I got every, every dime I was do in that movie I got but there were other actors who never got all their money yeah. and I always say to them that you know you must have really liked me because you paid me all my money <laughs> <laughs> where other people I said yeah he didn't like him so much well he just didn't want you to money. choke him Erwin <laughs> That what? He just didn't want you to choke him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've never met the man, but, but Charlie ban has got, like, a real reputation. <laughs> and, and to know that he treated you so well, yeah, you must have been A on his list. Yeah, I must have, yeah, I must have been one of those actors. He said, yeah, he did. He worked hard. He did his job. Right, we'll pay him. Yeah. You know, this guy, uh, Joe Schmo, he didn't do his job. Give him a, a third of his money. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I never heard of anybody paying people like that except for Charlie Band. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he denies it, by the way. He denies it. Of he, course. Even Fred O'Reilly don't like him, and Fred O'Reilly don't have a hundred percent clean image either. You know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so like, you got like convention appearances coming up that, that we can talk about, or uh, what? Uh, Any convention appearances coming up? Uh, not at the moment. I'm. Uh, um, uh, um, I don't have any conventions uh, set. I mean, I'll be probably at the Comic Con in San Diego. I always do that show, and maybe I'll be doing the uh, in L.A. They they've moved the show to the uh, uh, to the convention center, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, by then, hopefully, WrestleManiac will be out, and they'll say, "Oh, we got to have him at this show." Yeah, I think that's gonna be a big thing because, like I said, wrestling and horror. I, I don't know, like, we were talking earlier, and, and, and Tiffany told me not to mention it, but I always bring up controversial stuff. That's me. You just got to forgive me. <laughs> Do you know of a director by the name of Jeff Burr that was involved with that? Because, see, he's a friend of mine. He, he directed Leatherface 2, and he had told me about a movie he was working on. It was a wrestling movie, and, and we thought it was this movie, but we wasn't sure. Uh, no, no, it wasn't Jeff Burr uh, that directed this, but I know Jeff Burr. Yeah. I worked on something with Jeff Burr years ago. Yeah, he's a great guy. Very good, yeah. He's uh, he's a very nice guy, nice man, and uh, he's a good director. Very well qualified what he does, and uh, and I've always liked him, yeah. yeah. So once again, tell everybody, why should they see WrestleManiac? WrestleManiac is a good... Movie. <laughs> it's a movie. It's gonna. You're gonna walk. You know how you go to see movies and you say, eh, I didn't get it. You know, or this and that. These great. These so-called great Oscar-winning movies that are out right now. And you know, you look at them. Eh, eh. When you see WrestleMania, you're gonna walk out and say, You know what? That was a good movie. I got my money's worth. That was a good movie. Yeah. And we're home.
Gulfing the Sea and something else Rob does down the road. I mean, you work with him again, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, keep keep seeing him, running into him, so... Uh, you know, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll work again together because uh, you know we got along real well. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He actually listens to me, so I'm honored for that. So you know, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a real he's a real horror guy. I mean, he's not fake. I mean, he really really is into this whole thing. So. No, yeah, he did a, such a great job there with Halloween. I just you know I, you know I, I, he was just right. You know. Oh, you really like that, huh? He's yeah, I did really. Yeah. Yeah. Some of our uh, listeners earlier were actually wanting to find out, because I, I would imagine with doing the convention circuit and things like that, that you stay in touch with a lot of the people that you've worked with. But they were wanting to know if you still talk to at all Sean Cunningham anymore from Friday the 13th, uh, from Friday the 13th anymore. Yeah, you know, I wish I do, but, uh, you know, I kind of have this, like, third-hand uh, contact through him to him. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who who uh, who, who, who gambles with him. <laughs> they play cards or something. They play you know you know Texas two hand or something every once in a while. So I know my name gets mentioned to him. And then uh, he was. Uh, I heard he was at the. Uh, we had the twentieth uh, and uh, fifth anniversary of Friday the Thirteenth. It was uh, a convention at, at Highland and, and Hollywood Boulevard. Right. And he was there, but. The, you know the guys who who did this thing. They had everything uh, all over the place, and the movie theater was like blocks away. And and he was there at the movie theater, and he never came over to where we were at the the site there. And uh, you know, I know he. Somebody told me that he wanted to, wanted to see me. You know, uh, and I sure would like to see him. It's been so long. I mean, I, well, I su- I suggest you do, Erwin, because I don't know if you know this or not, but they're remaking Friday the Thirteenth, and Sean's involved. Are they really? I yeah. yeah. Look him up. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this time you could be J- Jason. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. Well, now I'll, uh, he'll find a different part for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm going <laughs> to look that one up. <laughs> yeah, because I would assume you'd want to be in there. I know Betsy Palmer doesn't. <laughs> uh, doesn't? No, she's, I don't know, maybe she thinks she's a little beyond that now yeah. because, of, you know, she's up in age and everything. But Yeah, well, yeah. they might have a walk-on for her. You know, that's what yeah. they usually do. Because, you know, that, that's the most fun thing when they, they do the remakes or whatever is, is to have the cameos of the old cast. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there absolutely. You, go. you don't have, like, a, do you have, like, a website or anything you can plug? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a, a place if you go to... Um, if you go to uh, www.irwinkeys.com. That's K-E-Y-E-S, right? Yeah, I-R-W-I-N, I-R-W-I-N, K-E-Y-E-S, dot com. Uh, uh, and I have uh, uh, pictures there. I have uh, uh, um, I have a, uh, uh, a DVD there, uh, you know, a three-minute uh, uh, thing you could look at. And um, when you get to the, to the Diesel Gene commercial, that I had done year, uh, a few years ago. It's, I'm a, I play a, uh, I play a, um, uh, I, I play a, 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 a bad, cow, very bad cowboy. Uh, uh, you know, a gunslinger. Uh-huh. And uh, when I'm in, when I start off the commercial, I'm in bed with uh, with a whore. Uh, <laughs> you gotta know that it's they couldn't find an ugly enough woman to play the part. So they they decided to make it a guy, an ugly an ugly guy, and dress him up as a woman, and and that's who was the whore in the bed was an ugly guy. <laughs> because because Ginger Lynn Allen wasn't available at the time. <laughs> I, I, I mean this one, this guy. I mean he was, this this whore was real ugly. <laughs> they wanted the ugliest thing you could imagine. You know, it, it was so you know so nobody knows that unless you unless you hear the story. Erwin, you the, think that whore was... The commercial won the Palme d'Or at Cannes, mm-hmm. and it's actually a diesel, a diesel genius. It's a great commercial. I hope it's as good as, as, as that energy commercial you did for California here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, we shot that in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, like, you got a good deal out of that, getting to go to Brazil, hell. Well, yeah, Brazil, hell, that was it. I, I actually <laughs> flew down to Brazil... I had to fly to Miami, uh, and because the flight, I don't know, I missed the flight. I was up for 52 straight hours, including shooting the commercial before I ever got any sleep. 
you know, so it really was Brazil hell. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but it turned out it was a very good cause, and it was like, it was way, it was way before, you know, everybody now is suddenly aware of the energy crisis, you know what I mean? Right. We did that a few years ago, and, and it really came out good. Well, I have to, we'll have to talk to, uh, uh, Keith, my man, because we're going to be doing a radio show on here about wrestling. Maybe we can get you on there to promote uh, WrestleManiac again on that show because I know all the wrestling fans are going to go crazy over this. And I keep mentioning it because I love my people at Anchor Bay so much. They are so good to me. Oh, good, good. I think they're having a, some kind of tie-in with the with wrestling. It's going to be they're going to sell it on the, D, the DVD eventually on the uh, wrestling sites as well. Wow. I think they should have some of you cast, like, actually interact with some of the real wrestlers at wrestling shows. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can choke them, and they can choke you, and it's all yeah. fun, you know? Yeah, the, well, the, yeah, the, uh, uh, the Mexican wrestler was uh, Rey Mysterio Sr., who's a very uh, famous uh, Mexican wrestler. Absolutely. I, I, let, me, let me ask you, I don't want to, like, give too much away, but you said, like, he wears people's faces on his face kind of like leather face does, does any part of the movie have him wear an actual wrestling mask like you know the cloth mask absolutely all right that's that's, that's what it's all about he he uh he has his own little wrestling uh, uh, uh mat you know little stadium there where he takes you on you know i, I don't want to give too much away, right. but you know you got to see this thing this is really uh this really you're going to love. <laughs> well, you know, that's something that you could have done because you're a big man. You ever think about being a wrestler? Uh, I've, been, I've been offered that, but it's not what I do. <laughs> but I, I remember when we went to shake hands, your hand was so huge I couldn't even see my hand anymore. Well, yeah, I got, I got the biggest hands in show business. <laughs> and that's a good thing because it's always good to be remembered for something big, even if it's only your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People always say, well, it's true, I got the biggest hands. I mean, I got into a big fight once with Muhammad Ali about that. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was, I met him at the airport, and I introduced myself. I said, I got, I got the biggest hands in show business. And he looks at me and goes, nobody's got bigger hands than Muhammad Ali. I got the biggest hands. I'm the biggest. I'm the best. I'm the best. And I said, oh, yeah, well, put them out. And he put it out and he had a small hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, Owen. Right? I think Ron Jeremy would be envious of you because people with the big hands, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Well, he's a big ham. <laughs> I always run into him about once a year here or there, you know? And, and just, I think he's a pretty good actor. And just get out of his way if you're at the buffet table, though, yeah, because... Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. thanks so much for being on, Irwin, and, and yeah. like I said, you're you're one of the best. I, I I hope we get to hang out together again soon, and I hope okay. we get to work together because we're talking about something. And okay, yeah, and keep your eye out for the urn. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, definitely. And then I guess that'll be, what, is, is that going to be straight to DVD, or is that going to be uh, theater? Yeah, eventually it'll be on DVD, but, but at the Hollywood, it's going to be, uh, you know, in Hollywood, February 29th to March 6th at the Regency Fairfax Theater at... Uh, 2907 Beverly Boulevard. And you said that that had like a lot of black humor in that in it too, right? Oh, yeah, they, this thing is, yeah, this is, this thing is like, uh, you know, Five-ish Finkel is the star of this, is in this thing, and there's some really funny people. You know, it's 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 horror kind of comedy, you know? Uh, which I think is a perfect mix. I, you know, it's not a good horror film if it doesn't have some comedy element in it. You know, I lo that's what I love in a horror film when they have humor. Absolutely. You know, he, 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 black humor, you know, he, he, a movie needs that. You need some kind of comic relief from all that tension, you know? It has to be clever, I don't know if I, I dare say unintentional humor, but it has to be clever humor, unlike like the Freddy Krueger movies that he tried to be funny. I don't think it was funny because he tried to be funny. I mean, it just, you know, is, is a, there's a formula to it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it was same like our governor, you know, when he was, uh, when he was an actor. You know, he always said funny things. Yeah. That's what made it made his movies, and he didn't even realize it sometimes. <laughs> no, no. Now he uses his all all those phrases today. You know, uh, that's what he uses today is those phrases. And am I right that you told me that you actually got to work with Lana Clarkson? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, we uh, uh, we were at a. Uh, it was one time. It was at a karate show, and she was there. And uh, we, we were t I was talking to her a little bit. And she was demonstrating these knives for, for the people, and she was very nice. Very nice lady. Let me just ask you straight out. Do you think she's the kind of person that would kill herself? 
Well, three weeks later, she was dead. Yeah. And I, I know that she did not kill herself. Yeah. She did not. It, it, it's a real shame, man, because somebody that beautiful, I mean, my God. And it's just like Manson that took out Sharon Tate because I was so in love with her, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully uh, there's some kind of justice in this. Movie. Yeah, that that was pretty messed up, and that you know turned out to be a mistrial. Yeah, you know, I heard the, uh, I heard somebody was paid off on the jury. You know, when you have money, you can uh, get away with everything. Yeah. Well, that's Hollywood for you. That's Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know we got nice people in Hollywood like Irwin Keys. And, and you guys, too. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. And, and thank you for calling me in and having me on the show. I'm probably, uh, you know, just talking away here, right? No, oh, we, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. How's the show going? It's going good. Very well. <laughs> we, we had Larry Storch earlier from F Troop. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy. He sure is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he was great. I liked him, yeah. Yeah, you told me something that was strange. I guess the girl, Melody Patterson, the girl on that trip, when she did that show, she was 15, so they had to make sure all the actors behaved. Oh, really? <laughs> and I told him how much I liked her. He said, well, you're a child molester. Yeah, yeah, I was in love with her when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So you have a good night, uh, Irwin, and, and we'll be looking forward to uh, getting together with you again, hopefully, because yeah, I... Yeah, on your birthday, right? Right. Well, absolutely. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> good night. Good night, Irwin. Good night, guys. Bye.